So open your Bible with me this morning, please, to uh, Matthew, Matthew chapter 11. We'll be taking our text this morning, verses 25 through 30. I would ask that uh, it is a scripture that oftentimes we've heard, but I ask you not to shut me out. Don't shut me down, because any time that a minister of the gospel preaches the Word of God, he's going to do two things. He's going to do two things. He's going to bring something old, and He's going to bring something new. Something old and something new. Out of the treasure house, uh, we're going to find something old and something new. And we're believing that God is going to move supernaturally today. Can you shout, Amen, with me? Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 through 30. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank Thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because Thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in Thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son." and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is is light. Christians and sinners alike all over the world this morning are looking for the rest of the Lord. All over the world today, men, women, boys and girls are looking for rest that comes from God. The majority of the church doesn't know where to look, doesn't understand how God works, and hence they are no more restful than the world, working, active, moving in in the realms of religion, but not truly experiencing the rest of the Lord. We can find accomplishment, feeling good about what we do. We can find uh, circumstances pleasant to find uh, in our hearts and our minds, but that, ladies and gentlemen, is temporary satisfaction. That is not rest. I said, that's not rest. Just to feel good about myself today for an hour or so, that's not rest. To feel good about accomplishing something, though it's not wrong, that is not the rest of the Lord. When we find the rest of the Lord, when it truly becomes a part of us, it occurs inside. It passes all understanding. It doesn't make any sense, but something on the inside of us is at complete repose. I remember one taking my need to the Lord and saying, God, I I don't understand why I'm not experiencing the rest of the Lord. And the Lord spoke to my heart very specifically and said, Lord, I'm not existing in your effort. I live in your spirit. Inwardly, we have to experience rest. It is not a vacation. It is not simply a cessation or lack of activity. You can go on vacation. You can have a weekend rest. I was watching last night and I heard people getting up at 4 a.m. this morning to go shopping. And I laughed about it and told Joseph on the way to the church this morning. And he told me, that's nothing, Dad. Some folk were waiting at 12 a.m. when the stores opened up. They're looking for something that satisfies And there's only one thing that satisfies, and that is a proper relationship with God. And both sinner and saint today are looking for that rest, that proper relationship with God that can make living complete. And this morning I want to minister for a few moments on the subject, the rest of the Lord. 
the rest of the Lord. Bow your heads with me, please. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning in the precious and holy name of Jesus. Lord, I'm asking that right now you would anoint me to speak. Let the preacher come. Let the teacher come. The one who makes teaching and preaching easy. I ask for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And as well, I would ask, Lord, upon the hearts and minds of those who listen both here in the sanctuary and outside of the sanctuary, Father, that they would have ears to hear and hear what the Lord has to say. And we'd ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. In these simple words, in these simple statements, from verses 25 through verse 30, the Lord Jesus begins to reveal the prerequisites for His rest. He lays out a process that has to occur, again, in both sinner and saint alike in order to experience God's rest. Let me tell you, the same process that we in, that helps us encounter God, that we go through to uh, encounter God for the very first time, is the same process that we must embrace every single day. We can't, okay, I need someone to help me here. Every single day we go through the same processes that... Uh, bring us into proper relationship with God. How you got into relationship with God yesterday is the same way that you come into relationship with Him today, and it'll be the same way that you come into relationship with Him tomorrow. It's called your walk. How you approach your relationship with God is known as your walk. You walk before the Lord. You approach the relationship with the Lord in the same way. Paul said we are to watch our walk. We are to walk before the Lord. How do you approach the Lord? You are to approach Him the same way every single day. It never changes every single minute of every single hour. You don't have to find a new way to get in touch with God because there's only one way to get in touch with God. And it doesn't matter if you're sitting under the sound of my voice this morning and you're lost as the proverbial goose or if you've been a saint for 50 years. The process of how we approach God is the same. And there are three things that Jesus tells us here. First of all, He tells us that there's a need of revelation. Once the revelation occurs, secondly, relationship can occur. And once relationship occurs, then rest can occur. So if we're going to experience the rest of the Lord as a saint or a sinner, we're going to have to experience revelation, relationship, and then rest. Revelation, relationship, and then rest. We don't know what we need. And we don't even know, to be honest with you, how to approach God as we ought to so many times. God has to reveal something to us. To reveal something to us means that God takes uh, the, the, the cover off. It's like a, it's like a uh, statue that's been covered, uh, about to be presented to the world, and it's covered with a sheet. You can kind of see the form. But you can't really see what's underneath the sheet until the presenter takes the cord and rips the sheet away from the statue. And there in front of your eyes is a completed unveiling of what they want you to see. God is in the same process. You don't get anything from God unless He reveals it to you. I said, you don't get anything from the Spirit of God, from God Himself, unless He reveals it to you. The mind of man can't conceive what it is that God has prepared for those that love Him, but the Spirit has re- has revealed it. I said the Spirit has revealed it. If you're going to have a relationship with God, God's going to have to reveal something to you. God's going to have to pull back the cover. God's going to have to unveil something to you. 
And the only way for us to experience the revelation of God is not through work or not through effort, but here Jesus proclaims that revelation is a direct result of attitude. Revelation comes as a direct result of one's heart attitude. Let me ask you, what is your heart attitude today? There are two folk described here, some prudent and wise, and the other babes. What is your heart attitude today? Are you wise? Are you prudent? Are those wrong things? Absolutely no. But in the way that Jesus speaks of them here, yes, they are. Wise in their own eyes. Wise in their own ability. Thinking that what they're doing in the day of Jesus, it was the religious leaders. They thought that what they were doing was bringing them into relationship with God. They thought they were the cat's meow, the top dog. Let me just say it in a vernacular that is offensive to God. They thought they were all that. Somebody ought to get what I'm telling you. Any preacher that tells you you're all that isn't getting nothing from God. Because you and I aren't all that. The fact that we're not all that great, that we're not all that mighty, that we don't know what we have to have, and that we are people and creatures that have to be dependent on the Creator, the one that produced us, and the one that will sustain us, proves that we're not all that. And if we're being taught that we're all that, Grant, I need a little help here. If we're taught that we're all that, then the attitude of the heart is one that will close off God's operating and revealing to us. Because God doesn't unveil what you need to know if your heart isn't right. If your heart isn't one of dependence, if your heart doesn't have an attitude of humility, if your heart is inundated with pride, if you are unteachable, if you can't hear something from a baby and let God open it up, if you can't hear something from a first-year Christian, if you can't hear something from a preacher you don't like, If you can't hear what God is speaking, when God speaks, and as He speaks it through, whomsoever He chooses to speak through, then you got a problem. You've got a well, God can't use them. God can use whosoever He wants to use, whenever He's ready to use it. He doesn't ask you. Somebody needs to help me preach in this place today. He didn't ask you for permission to touch somebody's heart. He didn't ask you for permission to touch somebody's mouth. He didn't ask you, who do you want to be the mouthpiece of God? That's a choice of God Almighty. He didn't ask you. He just asked you to listen. And it doesn't matter where it comes from or what you think about who it is that says what it is. But if it comes from God, honey, you better be ready to be able to receive it. And if you can't receive, if you can't receive, if other things are blocking that ability for God to unveil things. There you can't even have a relationship with God, much less go into The rest of God, let me tell you, saints, some of us aren't getting nothing from God because our hearts are hard. We don't want to say it, but we are just the catch me out. We think we are the top dog. They just need to buy my book. They just need to let me preach. They just... Pastor just needs to let me take control. Pastor should let me lead the Bible study. I think I'll just... Most church splits are brought about by somebody who has considered themselves more highly than they ought to think. And it's an attitude of Korah. Well, I know the Lord too. Well, if you know the Lord, then shut up and learn. If you know the Lord and God is able to break through your pride, you might get something. But let me tell you something. This is scary because God says right here through Jesus the Christ that God doesn't just not give revelation to the wise. It says that God hides revelation. 
It's one thing if God has offered something to you that you don't take. It's a whole other thing if God covers it up and says, I'm not showing it to you. Wrong heart attitude, God looks at you and says, you ain't getting nothing. You ain't getting nothing. I'm not opening it up. I don't know how many times I've looked at people's eyes or and known that they were rejecting the message of the cross even as I preached. But what I really didn't understand is that their inability or unwillingness to yield to what God was saying was causing God up in heaven to say, they ain't getting nothing. They ain't getting nothing. God didn't just not let them receive it. He hid it. He hid it from them. Let me tell you, if your heart is hard, full of pride, you're not humble and able to receive from everything that God wants to let you have, let me tell you, you can't get anything because God Himself is hiding it from you. And that's a whole, I hope you're getting the difference, that's a whole lot of difference than God offering it to you and you not accepting it. It's God Himself not even letting you see or understand because pride is in the way. But God reveals what He needs to reveal to babes. Someone whose heart is soft. Someone who has allowed God to break the root of pride in the inward man. And most of the time, we as individuals, as human beings, saved and unsaved alike, we don't get to that place easily. There's always that holding back, that preservation of self, that protection of the person, that issue in our lives that won't let us release everything we are unto the living God and say, God, you take total control. We don't get to that place easily. And so God, oftentimes, before He can bring true revelation to us, has to knock us down a bit. God has to allow sin at times to debilitate and destruct our lives. Not so that He can destroy us, but rather so that He can finally get your heart to the place where you'll stop being so proud and let Him teach you something. Oh, I'm shouting this morning because I know what it's like to be broke. I know what it's like to be broken. You're either going to be broken upon the rock or by the rock. Your choice. God will take you to a place where He breaks and takes everything from you that you ever thought was important, only not to get you to a place where you're, uh, where you're angry and hurt and miserable, but to where you no longer trust in yourself. He'll take it all away. It doesn't matter if you're in the world or if you're in the world of religion. It doesn't matter if you're in the church or if you're in the world. God is going to work. Listen, God's greatest desire, I preached that message just a few weeks ago, is to bring the lost to Himself. But His second greatest desire is to have a proper relationship with His people. He doesn't want to just save you. He wants to have a relationship with you. And He's got to sometimes take us through things. That's why you've heard it said from this pulpit many times that desperation precedes revelation. You don't get desperate until God does something that breaks the root of your pride. Oh, I wish so-and-so was here. He's really preaching good about their circumstance. Oh, I wish she was here. She really needed it this morning. Oh, I wish he was here. He really needed this this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, you and I need it. We've got to develop an attitude that is one of humility, one that is of dependence, where we say, God, I don't care what you do. I don't care how you do it. I don't care what you do it through. Just 
be in me. Help me. Work in me. Live in me. God, I don't care what it costs and I don't care what it takes. And until we come to that place, God will allow sin, world, and circumstances to take away until we can finally hear. Brother Swigert quoted it this morning, a broken and contrite spirit I will not despise. But what this verse tells us, what these verses tell us, that unless our heart is broken and contrite, if there's pride and a lack of humility, God will not only not have a relationship with you, He closes the door. He closes the blind, locks the front, and said, not open. Heaven's not open to you. Heaven's not open to you. I remember what it was like before being saved as the drugs and the alcohol began to rob me of life, steal everything that I had destroy everything that I had, but still, even after the loss of my fingers in a textile factory accident, still I thought, I'm good enough, I'm, I'm strong enough, I can do it. It wasn't until God broke me down and I saw nothing but ruin, that I can, and I saw myself that I could set, accept His salvation. And some of you, Still struggling with the message of the cross. Still saying, well, I, I kind of like it, but I'm not quite sure. Well, I, I believe it, but I think I can add some of my old stuff to it. God is going to take you through some things to break your dependence on anything else but what He offers. To make you teachable. To cause you to become humble. My good friend, Curtis Hutchinson, lives in Atlanta, Texas. And he may be here, he may be uh, on the way. He said he may be here this weekend. But uh, he can tell it so much better than I. But I'll try to share a little bit of it with you. He was a minister in Atlanta, Texas. Part of a local church. Part of a local assembly. And... Things began to go wrong. Loved God. Walked with God to the best of his ability, but he was in a charismatic movement that didn't know how to teach people to have a relationship with God. They taught him the error of confession. They taught him the error of works. They taught him this method or that method. But Curtis's heart was soft towards God, and he was hungry for God. And he was a searcher of the Scriptures, but yet he got caught in this morass of false doctrine and direction. He seemed to have been blessed of the Lord as they had received a, a land and were going to build a brand new home on it. And all these things were moving forward and all of a sudden the bottom fell out. The church let him go. And instead of being blessed, he was back down to nothing. Had to take a job in a factory in Atlanta, Texas. A warehouse where he swept the floors. Now, it's a long drop from being on salary in a church, doing the work of the Lord, to pushing a broom on the backside of a warehouse. In a man's mind, he's got to wonder, Lord, what in the world are you doing? But one day, while he's sweeping out the back side of that warehouse, a Mexican with hair down to the back of his belt walked in and stuck up an old radio up on the back side of the building. And it was stuck on one station, Sun Life Radio. And here's a man wondering, what in the world is God trying to do in my life? 
What is God trying to produce in my life? I thought I was doing everything I needed to do. And now the land is gone. The house is gone. The ministry is gone. And I'm barely making it living in my mama's house or my, my, my wife's mom's house. And I'm pushing a broom in the back of a warehouse. I'll tell you what happened. God placed him where he could break him and where he could hear something. I said God placed him where he could hear something. God has done the same to you. And if he hasn't been able to do that, he's about to. If you find yourself in the back of a warehouse, preacher, you better listen to me today. God is trying to get your attention. Because God wants to open up something to you. And right now your heart won't let it happen. And He loves you so much, He's going to take it all away until you open up your heart so He can give you what you need. And in the back of that warehouse, Brother Curtis would tell us that he's sweeping that floor and sweeping that floor. And he heard Sun Life Radio and he heard the message of the cross and he got mad. Who do they think they are? Who do they... Who do they think they are? What in the world do they think they're doing? I don't believe that's not what the Bible says. You don't know how many times I've heard people tell me that. And then they go look it up and they say, when did they put that in there? (laughs) Honey, it's always been in there. You just hadn't been able to hear it yet. Said it's always said that. You just hadn't been able to hear it yet. But God is getting a generation. God is getting a generation ready to hear. I said God is getting a generation of this church world ready to hear. Get ready, church. God is already taking Curtis's and those like you and I and taking us to the backside of the desert. And when He finally gets them there, there's going to be an expositor's Bible. There's going to be a sunlight radio. There's going to be a witness. Because He's taken them to the place where He can break them and open up their heart to hear. You ought to know what's happening in the world today. God is doing it right now. There's generations of Christians that have been broken by God so that He could fix them through the message of the cross. And we don't have a lot of time to get it done. That's why we have to ask you for everything. That's why we ourselves are doing everything. Uh, Donnie got up and said, ask him to come. I thought, oh, Jesus. I'm already going out twice a month. I'm a homeboy. I like being home. But when somebody says, Brother Larson, we need to understand better about the message of the cross, I'm gone. I'm gone. If it can be worked, if it can be fixed, because I know that the time is short, God is going to open up a window. And when He does, we better be ready. And we need as many people ready as they can be for what God wants to do. You are a part of that. You are a part of the reason that God is doing what He's doing. Because many of you in this place, and many of you over Sun Life Radio, you know what God is doing. He's been breaking people. Ministers that you know would have never received the message of the cross one year ago are almost ready. Family members that rejected you and pulled you away and pushed you down are almost ready. Hey, it's a preparation time. God is doing something. You may not see it, but they're feeling it. The loneliness of the pain, the loneliness of the breaking is going to be represented by God working. And as God works, you're going to have the opportunity to present the truth. Pushing the broom. What's wrong? He listened. Get mad. But he said this. He said over and over again. He found himself pushing that broom 
back toward the back of the warehouse. What are they saying now? What are they saying today? Man, what are they saying? Well, I don't believe that. That's not in the Bible. When did that get in there? Pushing that broom. Pushing that broom. Broken. Contrite. Hurting. And all of a sudden, God said, in heaven, I'm lifting the veil. You're ready now, son. I'm lifting the veil. Hallelujah. That which was hidden from you will not be hidden any longer. I am lifting the veil. Get ready. Here it comes. It's almost there. Are you ready? Here it is. God's going to show you. Here it comes. And he lifted it up and he saw it. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a whole group of people out there that have been like the Apostle Paul, as Saul, persecuting the message of the cross. But God is about to knock them down on the road to Damascus and make them a stalwart preacher of a gospel they once persecuted. Don't you give up hope. Don't you stop believing. Don't you back up. Sit down or shut up. Because when they feel a little bit of mud in their eye, the first thing they're going to think about is what it is that you've told them. It's what it is that you said. There's a relationship with God that you can have through the cross. My God, nothing else is work. I'm broken. I'm down. I got my face in the mud. I'm not doing anything for God. I guess I might as well listen. And Curtis started listening. Started growing. Started seeing it. All of a sudden, somebody said, Curtis, why don't you start a church? Well, six months ago, I didn't have anything to say. But now I got something to say. And if you go to cross... If you go to Atlanta, Texas today, you'll find Curtis Hutchinson in a growing, thriving little church called Crossway Church. Said, I called it Crossway Church. Crossway Church of Atlanta, Texas, where the cross is being preached. It's on Main Street, and it's ready to get something into the hearts and lives of people. You ought to do it better than that. Because some of you are going through the same thing right now. God is getting you ready. And if this doesn't excite you, well, that tells me your heart is hard. That tells me you still can't hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. If that doesn't thrill you, we ordained Curtis here a few um, last year. And I've been to his church, Brother Donnie's been to his church, going back in January. And I can look around the place and I can see church after church, Crossway Church of Texarkana, all across the room here. I see, it was in this man's church in Panama City, small little tiny building, but the power of God is there. Small group of people, but not for long, Pastor. Not for long, because God had you hidden away to bring that message to another. There's some of you, Brother... Up in Tennessee, you get ready. You get ready. Because God's got it ready. He's got it started. He's going to work it. He's going to work it. That Family Worship Center in Tyota, Tennessee will be touched by the power of God. And all those that are being broken by the Lord will be able to hear what it is that you're saying. I don't know if you're getting this. I'm prophesying to you today. God is getting something ready. He's had it hid, but He's about to unveil His plan in your home, in your church, in your city. It's time for a move of God. It's time for God's people to hear. It's time for God's people to learn how to have a relationship with God. Pastor Wayne Voss, Greenwood, Mississippi. 
Same thing. Brothers got a group of people there that love God. They preach the cross. That was started as an aspect of this ministry. And I could go around the room right now and point them out. Brother Ronnie, up in area Huffman, Texas, preaching the cross. Get ready. 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 You came looking for a word? I just gave you a word. I said, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Because it is of the Lord, birthed by God, pursued by God, and will be completed by God. You've looked at your ministries and you've said, I don't understand why God has me where He has. You have been strategically placed. God has set you like a jewel in the midst of coal. If we can't, my goodness, don't you understand that you don't put all the salt in one place on a steak? You spread it around so that it can season. And it doesn't take a whole lot of salt to change the flavor of a steak. It doesn't take a whole lot of spirit-filled, tongue-talking believers who understand the message of the cross to impact the nation. I didn't say your city. I said a nation. Hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us today. Get ready. Quit despising the day of small things. God didn't do what He has done through this ministry in a corner. He chose a circumstance and a person that everybody in the world would know and everybody in the world would watch and everybody in the world could see. God has given the body a gift. But we don't have much time. I said we don't have much time. What we do, we've got to do it quickly. There's not much time. What we do, we've got to do quickly. There's not much time. What we have got to do, we've got to do it quickly. With all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our help, with all of our finances, with all of our heart. Quickly! The window of opportunity is about to open up. What's going to happen if God breaks them? They're lying there broken. And the radio station was supposed to go on. But you didn't give. What about the Bible that was supposed to be in the prison library? But we didn't give. He's doing it all over the world. Breaking the pride off of saved and unsaved alike so they can hear. If I was to go around this room this morning, I would wager that God had to do the same thing that I've been talking about in every person's life in this room. How many of you had to be broken before you were ready? Look. Look, what makes you think that you're any different than anybody else? The difference between you and them is that God chose you first. He gave it to you first because He trusted you to do all you could. Because there's sinners that are looking for rest. There are saints 
searching for rest. And you have the answer. Because He cared enough about you to break you and prepare you to hear. He's broken you. Helped you to empty of yourself. He did it to bring rest to your soul. He wants to use you and me, this church, that network, the telecast, the expositors, to open up the ears of the people and give them something to hold. I had a lot of other things I'm going to, I wanted to say, but I'm done. Stan. The rest of the Lord. The rest of the Lord. There's only one way to experience the rest of the Lord. To have our ears opened and have the Holy Spirit point us to Jesus. And Jesus will point us to His cross. The Father has to reveal the Son. And the Son has to reveal the Father. And when sinner and saint alike come to the end of themselves and allow God through broken heart to plant something new And something new can grow. It's not easy. We're in a fight of faith. But God is faithful. And He will do it. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I know I haven't stated many things I came to say. But I don't want to overshoot the Holy Ghost. There's no sense in that. But I can't present this message, this great invitation of come unto me and not ask this question. And we're early, so I'm asking that none of you would leave. None of you would move for just a moment. Souls hang in the balance. You're here in this room and you really didn't want to come. For some reason, you've wandered into this building today. You've wandered across this radio station. You've wandered across an internet site. Your heart is broken. And you don't know what to do. You thought you understood God. You thought you understood the things of God. But life is just not where it needs to be. My friend, you're in the perfect place to hear from God today. And the Spirit of God is telling you, if you come to Jesus, if you'll come to Him, He'll bring you into relationship with God. And then He'll teach you if your heart remains soft and pliable. He'll teach you how to have a relationship that not just brings you into rest, that maintains rest. But you're here this morning. And you need to take that first step. Every head bowed, every eye closed, I'll ask this question. And Lord, let the Spirit of an evangelist work through me right now. You're here and you need to get right with God. You need to surrender because God's been dealing with you. It's been hard. But in your heart this morning, you sense hope. You want to give your heart to Christ right where you stand. I want you to just raise your hand up. Raise it up high. Raise that hand up. You want to get, I see that hand, brother. Is there another? You need to get right with God. You know you're not where you need to be. You need to get right with the Master. He's calling you today. I see that hand in the back. Put your hand up. 
I see that hand. You need to get right with God. Right where you stand right now, I want you to leave your seat. I want you to come down. We want to pray with you. I won't embarrass you, I promise. But I want you to take that step of faith a little bit further. I want you to come. Come on, brother. You need to get right with God. You know it. Come on. Come on, my friend. Hallelujah. Come on, my brother. Come on. Come on. Come to Jesus. Come on. Come on. Come on. And it's enough of the sin, enough of the brokenness, and enough of the loss. His answer to you is Jesus. His answer to you is Jesus. There are others. God's still dealing with you. Right now, that's it. Honey, you're not coming to a man. You're coming to the Lord Jesus. Come on, my friend. Come on, my friend. Come on, Christians. I need you to pray. I need you to pray. That's it. Come on. If there's somebody next to you and they're not right with God, they might just need a nudge or an offer to walk down here with them. Come on. You're coming to Christ. Coming to the one who's able to do what no one else can do. Those of you over Sunlight Radio listening, God is about to do something brand new in your heart. This is what this ministry is all about. Hallelujah. I want those of you that have come down to this altar just to look up here, Brother Larson, for a moment. I'm going to pray with you. Now, my prayer won't save you. But if you reach out through the brokenness of your heart and simply accept Christ, accept what He did for you in just a moment's time, every sin stain will be washed away. It's that simple. Today in your heart you feel it because God has opened it up to you. That's why you're standing here. Because God has showed you that this is what it is He has for you. And I want you to just pray a simple prayer with me that just says what's already in your heart. Would you pray, everyone in the congregation, dear Heavenly Father? Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you today. I come to you today in the name of Jesus. I'm sorry for my sins. The way I've lived and the things I've done. Right now, I accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. I believe He died on Calvary to pay for my sin. And according to the Word, the Holy Word of God, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And right now, I'm calling, I'm believing, and according to God's Word, I'm cleansed, I'm healed, I'm saved, and I'm born again in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Those of you over Sun Life Radio, there are those of you sitting right where you are in your car, in your home, on the internet. You've been listening and God's touched you. If you've prayed that simple prayer with us today, then God has done in you what He has done in these here. He has written your name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. He's drawn you into relationship with Him. And now it's time to learn the message of the cross. Now it's time Praise to learn God. of Him yes, yes. and embrace the process daily of relationship, which starts off each day right where you are now. God, I can't do anything to change myself, but I believe that what Jesus did for me at Calvary I'm going can make it through, can make it through, can make it through. Turn around love somebody right here. Those of you that are here in this congregation, love somebody, encourage somebody.
podcast has been a blessing to you and you would like to contribute to this ministry, feel free to contact us at 1-800-288-8350 or you can go to our website at www.jsm.org. We love you. God bless you. Oh, for him, dear Savior.